Hi, today we have Greg Page, founder of Heart of the Nation, a not-for-profit organisation with a goal to distribute as many AEDs into our local community as possible to increase the survival rate of sudden cardiac arrest. Tell us all about it. Well, I started Heart of the Nation because I survived a sudden cardiac arrest and 90% of people don't. And it's really important that people understand the role that they can play in helping to save a life. And it really is quite simple. It's a matter of being able to call, push, shop. And that is how we can save more lives. So I really want to raise awareness about that, particularly the role that people can play in saving lives. It's so important, but we can't do it without the help of great organisations like Canterbury League. So thank you so much. Through our relationship with Heart of the Nation, Canterbury is fortunate to have purchased and installed many AED units spread across our Canterbury, Rakemba and Moxon venues in areas like reception, the bistro and next to the staff room. We identified these areas as they are the main spaces where people tend to congregate and also they can be deployed very quickly. In cases of emergency, our goal is to have enough AEDs in our venues so that help is never more than a minute or two away. Caring for our community means equipping it with the power to save lives. In terms of medical emergencies, every second counts. And having accessible AEDs nearby can be the difference between life and loss. So let's take a look at what is an AED and when do you use one? Well, this is one type of AED, an automated external defibrillator. No matter what type or brand of AED you might be looking at, they all operate in a very similar way. You just have to turn it on, listen to the instructions and follow the instructions. The AED is used to shock a patient's heart when someone is in cardiac arrest. But what's cardiac arrest? When someone's in cardiac arrest, it means their heart has stopped beating and is no longer pumping blood around their body. And the AED is used to shock the patient's heart momentarily stopping it and allowing the electrical system of the heart to reset and start up again so the heart can pump under its own steam. But how do you know if somebody is in cardiac arrest? Well, somebody who's in cardiac arrest will not be responding. They can't answer you, they can't talk to you, they can't move and they can't breathe because their heart is not beating. They will not be breathing and that's really important that we understand what that means. They won't be breathing normally. It might sound like they're gasping, gurgling or choking, and that's not normal breathing. So if somebody's not responding and not breathing normally, then it's time to call, push, shock. And the shock is what's delivered from the AED. So let's look at what we do if we find somebody who's collapsed and is not responding and not breathing. So if you see somebody who's collapsed, we need to make sure that they're okay. First thing we do is we look around to make sure that the scene itself is safe. Check for danger, because we don't need another casualty. We need to make sure that this person's gonna be okay and that we're gonna be okay. So look around for any moving objects. Look around for swinging objects, falling objects. Check for water, check for electricity, check for anything that could put you in danger. Once you've checked for all of those things, we need to check for response. Is the patient responding? Before we do that, our first instinct might be to go up and touch the patient with an open hand. That could be quite dangerous if that patient is connected to electricity. You might wanna start by touching the patient with the back of your hand, and that way you can tell if there's a shock. If there's a shock from the patient, you know there's still some electrical danger that you need to remove. So check for that, remove that danger, and then proceed. If you go and touch that patient with an open hand and they're connected to an electrical current, what's going to happen is that you'll touch the patient, your muscles will contract and you'll be attached to that patient you can't let go and you will become the next victim. So make sure that you start by touching the patient with the back of the hand. If there's a shock, check for further danger. If there's no shock, then you can touch the patient and check for a response. How do we get a response from the patient? What does that mean? In fact, the triple zero operator will probably say to you, is the patient conscious? Well, conscious means that they can respond. If they can't respond, they're unconscious. So let's check for response. In order to see if this patient can respond, think about cows, C-O-W-S. Can you hear me? Call that out to the patient. Can you hear me? Open your eyes. Can they open their eyes? 
What's your name? Ask them their name. And finally, squeeze my hand. If this patient can't do any of those things, they're not responding. It's time to call triple zero. So if this patient is not responding, call triple zero straight away. That's call. The next thing we need to do is see if this patient is breathing normally. Now, normal breathing is quiet and effortless, just like I'm breathing now. You can't hear me breathing. We can look, listen, and feel to see if this patient is breathing normally. So we look at the patient. What's the color of their skin? Is their skin color normal or is it a, a bluey gray kind of color? Are their lips blue and gray? That's not normal. We look, we listen. Can we hear any breath coming out of their mouth? Put your cheek and your ear down to their mouth and see if you can hear any breath or feel any breath on your cheek. We can also put our hand on their chest and see if we can feel the chest rising and falling and we can see the chest rise or fall too. If there's no rise and fall of the chest, if there's no breath coming out of the mouth, if it sounds like they're gurgling, choking or uh, not breathing normally at all, it's time to start CPR and it's very easy to do. Anybody can do CPR without any training at all. What we need to do is find the middle of the patient's chest, get down beside them, have your knees about shoulder width apart and lean over the patient. Find the middle of their chest by drawing a line between the nipples and straight down the middle of the chest, straight down the middle and right across between the nipples. Place one heel of the palm of your hand smack bang in the middle of their chest, the other hand on top. And we're going to use our body weight to push down on the patient at a beat of about two compressions every second. All right, now if you can remember that BG song, Stayin' Alive, you can sing that in your head because that's the right tempo to push at to do CPR. So we can sing, Stayin' Alive, Stayin' Alive, Ah, 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 Stayin' Alive. So that's how we do CPR. It's so simple. You don't need to worry about doing breaths. Hands only CPR is okay. There is no need to worry about doing breaths. Hands on chest is best. So when we're doing CPR, don't push. It gets very tiring pushing with your arms like that. Use your body weight to rock up and down on the chest of the patient. And we're gonna be um, pushing to about a third of the depth of the patient's chest. It's a fair, fair amount of pressure we've got to put on that patient's chest. So you might hear ribs breaking or cracking, and that's okay. Because if this patient is not responding and not breathing, they're not gonna feel that but it's so important that somebody is pushing on that patient's chest because we become the external manual pump for the patient's heart because it is no longer beating. It's no longer pumping blood around the body on its own. So when we become the external manual pump for this patient, you can see here the lights on this CPR mannequin are lighting up and that's representing the blood flow. So I'm pushing on the patient's chest and you can see the blood is getting up to the patient's brain. And that's so important because when this patient survives, we want the best possible outcome. And that means they need blood perfusing their brain throughout this whole CPR process. So CPR is really important. So we've called triple zero, we've got paramedics on the way, we've started pushing on the patient's chest. Call, push, shock is the next thing we need to do. So when an AED arrives on the scene, use it as soon as it gets there. You don't need any training at all to use an AED, just like you don't need to be trained to do CPR. You just need to turn it on, listen to the instructions and follow the instructions and you could save a life. It's really important that this device is used as quickly as possible because this is the thing that will most likely resuscitate the patient when you use it. So let's have a look at what you do to use an AED. Find the power button if there is one, or in some cases an AED has a lid that you simply open up and it starts talking to you. The thing you need to remember is this device needs to start talking. So find a way to turn it on and get it talking. This one has a power button that we can simply turn on. Training scenario five, adult patient. Call for medical assistance. We've already done that. We've called triple zero. Remove clothing from patient's chest to expose bare skin. Sometimes you need to cut the clothing away from the patient. Pull green tab to remove pads. 
pull the pads out. Apply pads to patient's bare chest, as shown in picture. There's pictures on the pads Press to pads show you to where to place the pads. Skin. One pad goes up above the pull right chest. To remove pads. The other pad goes Peel pads from liner. below the left chest, just slightly on the side Apply there. Pads to patient's bare chest. So what's going to happen here is we're going to send an electrical shock between the two pads that are on the patient's chest right across the heart, momentarily stopping that electrical activity and allowing it to boot up again and get the heart pumping under its own steam. So remember this, the driver's side of the car seatbelt goes from top right down to bottom left. That's where the pads of the AED go. They follow that same pattern. The great thing about an AED is that it makes all of the decisions. You don't need to decide what to do. Just listen to what it tells you to do because as soon as you get the pads on the patient's chest, it's analyzing the heart rhythm and it will not shock a patient that does not need to be shocked. So you can't harm the patient. It's important to remember that. The AED can only do good things to the patient. So let's try it and see what we can do here for this patient. Press pads firmly to patient's bare skin. And assessing see, heart rhythm. it's assessing the heart do rhythm. Don't touch the patient. Don't touch the patient. Analyzing, do not touch the patient. Still analyzing. Stand clear of patient. Stand clear. Shock advised. Shock advised. Stand clear of patient. Press the orange shock button now. Press the orange shock button when it tells you to. Shock delivered. Begin CPR. Okay, so in this case, it is safe to touch the, patient. the patient hasn't had its Place heart started up again. In middle of chest. So keep doing CPR. Press directly down on the chest in time with metronome. And the AED gives you the tempo at which Remain to push calm. to. And try and remain calm. Good compressions. Thank you. So it's quite quick, and it's a lot of energy and effort required to do CPR. But it is so important that we do it. Paused. Because CPR combined with an AED is the thing that can help save a life. It's really important to listen to the AED and follow its instructions and don't take the pads off the patient until the paramedics arrive. Follow the instructions, do what it says, you'll be safe and the patient could end up surviving what could be a very life-threatening situation if nobody intervenes and does something. When it comes to sudden cardiac arrest, doing something is better than doing nothing. And you could be that person that makes a difference that helps somebody survive. All right, let's recap everything we've learned and put it really simply. When it comes to sudden cardiac arrest, any attempt at resuscitation is better than no attempt. You don't need to be trained or qualified to do CPR or use an AED. If you see somebody who's collapsed, the first thing you need to do is check for danger. Make sure the scene is safe before you check for a response. Once the scene is safe, check to see if the patient is responding. Are they awake? If they're not awake, the next thing we need to do is call triple zero and get the paramedics on the way. Check for breathing, and if the patient isn't breathing normally or at all, start CPR. Push on the patient's chest. And then finally, if an AED is available, make sure you use the AED to shock the patient as soon as it arrives. Listen to what the AED says to do, follow its instructions, and you could save a life. To put it very simply, call, push, shock. Thanks, Greg. Thanks for taking the time to show us how AEDs work. Pleasure. Thank you. How can we find out more? Well, if you want to find out more, head to the Heart of the Nation website or download the Heart of the Nation app. As simple as that. Thanks, Greg. Fantastic.